intro said part two is going to be our repicon pickups and we're also going to go through the rest of the snakes give you an update our snake collection's really grown um you know and i've downsized some too if you caught the other video we got rid of a lot of the frogs we'll talk about that a little bit right now though we're gonna start with amazon all the new ones we'll go through all the old ones sit back hope you enjoy it guys all right guys Amazon tree boa. Now I've wanted one for a while. My buddy Jonathan has sent me a message a few weeks ago and I also um, picked up this cage while we was at the show. It's another one from bigger boxes or dragon cages. Uh, I really enjoy in these enclosures. I've got this one, this one, that one, and one up there that my ball python's in. But uh, really sweet enclosures, guys, all PVC. Anyway. This little hissy sucker, if I can keep from getting bit. There is my Amazon tree boa, of course, you know, as the name implies, comes from the Amazon region. Uh, the coastal side of the Amazon, or South America, really, really pretty oranges on this guy. Um, I said my buddy Jonathan, uh, Reptile Passions, he always hooks me up. We've been talking back and forth. I told him I was looking for one, and he come up with this guy. Let's see if you can see him a little bit better. Beautiful. During the day, I've noticed that he stays, you know, down low and he gets up. He goes around his limbs and such at night, but he's feeding really well on uh, frozen thawed. Have no complaints right now with him. I really wanted one. 
Um, keeping his enclosure, of course, got a large water bowl. Uh, stands 60 to 70 percent humidity on this guy. Um, and this little light, I actually have to do anything different. He, I've watched him bask up there a few times now, but it gets upwards 88 to 90 degrees. Ambient temp, of course, stays whatever the room is, which alternates. I've got it at night, it gets down to about 76 to 78 in here, depending. And uh, 84 ish during the day. That is the Amazon. Really, really tickled to have found that guy. And there's his enclosure again. Down below him, the other two pickups. These are my southern copperheads. There is one. And the other is back there. So I kind of got y'all some good clips in the beginning. So I'm going to have to pull out a whole bunch of stuff. But these are captive bred babies. So far doing really well. I haven't had them, got a chance to get them to feed yet. I have tried various different things so far. I know these guys can be temperamental, especially being shuffled around. So hopefully within in the next few weeks, they'll, uh, they'll feed. I'm hoping I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna try to feed them kind of on a weekly basis. Every week I'll try until they eventually take it. Um, with copperheads, that can be an issue from what I've read. Right above him, my moccasin. I got some clips in the beginning. This is a cottonmouth, water moccasin, whatever you want to call it. I know he's back behind that bowl or under his leaf, but that's his enclosure. Another one of the dragon cages. My and favorite. April's favorite, our pygmy rattler, which is right above him. If they can't see his head. Which that guy is really inquisitive. See it. And guys, by no Just means, say. you know, I had someone to uh, message me that they were getting a canebrake rattlesnake or a timber. I timber. can't remember. It was a timber, yeah. Because I inspired them. Look, I don't want to inspire any of you to get anything venomous. I mean... Especially not any type of rattlesnake aside yeah. from a pygmy. pygmy. Yeah, I mean... When we did I, a lot of research. When I read that, I was like, holy crap. You know, it's nuts. And then they responded, oh, I got rid of it because it almost bit me. There again, guys, I do scary not. Scary stuff. Yeah, scary stuff. I'm never in proximity close enough for these guys to be bitten. You know, I'm not getting into stuff that I've got a force feed or anything like that. I have this little partition, which actually have got me another one I've been cutting on. And what I use this for is to kind of, you know, promote a barrier between me and the snake when I'm doing water changes or getting poop I can throw these right in here put something in between us but I just wanted to put that out there I had a lot of apprehensions um, when I first decided to get into the hot stuff a few hot stuff and, and I've only got stuff that's um, indigenous to my area <clears throat> Um, you know, as I've stated before, I can't keep non-venomous stuff from the state of Georgia, but my venomous stuff is okay. But even if we could, we I would not yeah, be I'm venturing not, into that Not ball into game. the Definitely cane breaks, not. the diamondbacks, you know, the westerns, uh, none of that One stuff. One more clip. Is he right there still? But yeah, guys, I just really wanted to put that out there. It really bothered me when I read that. I was like, Very cool snakes. But yeah, I mean, awesome stuff. Definitely not something that we're trying to promote as far as no. rattlesnakes in general. I, I'm 35 years old now, guys. I've been keeping for a long time. Done a lot of soul searching before we ever. We will got not into have that. diamondbacks, timbers, yeah. any type of rattlesnake you know, like that. Any kind of exotic venomous stuff. Not going to happen. Uh, the, you know, I'd, of course, I wouldn't want to take a bite from any of them, but. These you know, are the lesser of the yeah, demons. <laughs> I mean, I'm sure I can get some medical attention before I kick over. If not, hey, like I said, I'm 35, halfway through Whatever. life anyway, so. Lesser of the demons. If I thought that were the case, he wouldn't be keeping them. And also, guys, they're out here in this room. You notice I labeled everything extremely good just because we have people to come and take care of animals or out of town. Yeah, and my such. mom and dad. <laughs> or, you know, if something were to happen, you know, like I drive a lot. For some reason I didn't make a home, was hospitalized, whatever. If people had to come, they need to know what is what. Uh, so that's where all these little labels come into play. Um, but there again, guys, like I say, I do not 
Definitely don't condone yeah, that. Yeah, if, if you want to get into something like this, do your research, but please don't tell me you got into it because I inspired No timbers, you. no yeah, diamond bags, yeah, none of that stuff. Let me know I inspired you to get a green tree python or, yeah, or that's something awesome. like that. But, you know, I, I just, uh, I can't stress that enough, guys. But, uh, other my little rant there over venomous, be careful. Just because you see the stupid reptile guy doing it, please don't do it. Absolutely. Um... I guess we'll scoot over here. See the I changed the green tree out. Got him a nice frontal opening enclosure. If y'all been watching me a while, guys, or if you're new to the channel, you know I've complained a lot about the enclosure I had with when I would reach over the top. Um, this guy is so food aggressive and food driven that he would strike the top of the enclosure. Um, I definitely. You know, that, that's really bad. He's never injured himself, but there again, you never know. Um, front openings with these snakes is always going to be better. Um, I covered half of it to keep the humidity up. Uh, in the beginning clip, you'll see that he, he just had a shed, had a full shed, which is really good. When I had him inside, his last shed come off in pieces. Moved him back out here. It just, that's Seems his to be really it, good. So far, he's had two sheds since he's been back out here, and... They've been really, really good. Um, above him, and I'll take the camera and throw it up there. This is my little neonate green tree. Um, and that is actually, this is a back. Uh, this one down here is actually in a roo. Um, you can actually, I think you can see it on camera. I'm jumping back and forth. But you can start seeing a little bit of the blue spots come out on this one. This guy's really done well, feeding awesome. No, he thinks I got him something. Yeah. He's trying to eat too. Probably gonna strike it. <laughs> I really love my tree snakes, guys. The green trees are some of my favorite. Uh, that's actually when I got rid of the frogs that I got rid of. You know, I had the gliding frogs and the red eyes and these enclosures. I'm gonna leave them empty for now because, of course, him and then my Solomon Island tree. Oh. I'm gonna have to grab him down. Here you go. Uh, if y'all caught the Asheville Repticon, y'all see I picked this guy up. It's a captive bred. He usually just cut his heat pad on, so yeah, he's gonna be in the bottom down here. Let me move some stuff around and set him down. Um, Indonesian tree, tree boa or Solomon Island tree boa. This guy was, I was lucky enough to find, I've been looking at these a couple of different times, different shows. I was just fortunate enough to find a captive bred that has already been feeding frozen thawed. I was, like I said, I was real apprehensive about getting one of these guys just because of the fact that a lot of times whenever you get them, especially if you get a wild caught, you end up having to scent with gecko or scent with lizard, you know, to get them to feed. This guy is taking pinkies with no problem. He actually eats two pinkies at a feeding. And it gets he'll get up in the trees, but it gets up under his water bowl whenever I've got his heat pad under there. Um, and once he needs to thermoregulate, he goes back up to the top, to the upper reaches. But it's been a really cool snake. I really can't wait to watch this guy grow. Awesome, awesome snake. Another um, tropic... Um, you know, 80 degree range ambient to a 90 degree hot spot seems to be working like a champ. Being in the room, uh, 60 to 70% humidity, and he's done really well. And with a lot of my animals, guys, you know, I do have, like I said, a heat mat under here to kind of promote a little bit of a temperature gradient. Um, I don't run those every day, though. I'll run the heat mats two or three days in a row and then actually leave them off. Uh, leave them off for a day or two you know in the wild if you think about it you know some days it'll be a few degrees warmer some days it'll be a, a few degrees colder same in humidity you'll have drier aspects and that's not with every animal I mean, there's some animals that it stays humid all of the time but with stuff like that especially with the tree snakes I have found that allowing them to dry out it's really kept down um, any kind of skin or dermal infections that you can come up with from them being too moist all the time 
Uh, that, that's been a big thing for me is, is allowing them to dry out and then raise the humidity back up. It's worked out great, you can see in that clip. Uh, have had perfect sheds, no issues there. So, uh, you know, give it a shot. Just because you, you read, what you read, <coughs> you know, and a lot of regurged information, yeah. you'll, uh, you don't have to keep the animal at, at the same exact temperatures constantly. I mean, just like I said, most of these animals in the wild, you'll have temperature fluctuations, and, and I try to offer that, and it's just really worked out well for me. But here is our Nelson's milk snake that we also picked up from that same show. You don't go nuts. He's an albino. April's gonna grab him. I've been looking at milk snakes for a while, and uh, just finally decided to get one. These guys are so fast. This guy's been doing great feeding so on a. pretty now. We got a couple of peas in there. He's been doing great feeding on frozen thawed also. Uh, I've been very fortunate, guys. I don't have any snakes that I'm having oh, to feed uh -huh. live stuff to. That is our Nelson's milk snake. Uh, these guys come from Mexico. Uh, they're found on the coastal plains uh, down around Mexico. There we go. Really can't wait on him to start growing. Really been tickling with that guy right there. Got a little better view. Next to them, off to the snakes, they, I, I've got to give a shout out to uh, Erie Arachnids, and I'm going to give him another shout out when I do my <laughs> spider update and insect update. But yeah, very He cool. sent me some baby assassin bugs these are african they're not under there they're underneath here okay well, very... oh, there's two right there i can't see right oh, here i see oh no 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 no! i don't want to get bit there's two oh. the third one's down here i don't know if anybody even got oh oh, oh they're right there yeah hold on just don't want to crush them and there's another one right there i've got four here, I'm gonna see if I can. He sent me seven guys, and unfortunately, I, I, I'm blaming it on the uh, the post office this time. We had a postal lady. She showed up when she said. I, then she called me about 30 minutes later and said, "Oh, I, I had a package for you." And I, I mean, I explained. I was out there, though. That's what made me never so bad. never rang the doorbell. Just ridiculous, ridiculous. Oh, sorry. But those are my assassin bugs. I'm really tickled. Three of them didn't make it. More updates later. Yeah, he sent me seven total. I could not be more tickled. Dave, I appreciate that. I just wanted to throw him a shout out in there. Yeah, thank you so much. We'll talk about it some more. Let's set another video when I do an insect update. But I've always wanted some assassin bugs. He had some babies that those were actually some that he had eggs off of his. Graciously sent them to me. I mean, I, I can't. So thank you enough, man. But it's Erie Arachnids. I'm gonna leave a link down below. I'll probably throw the name up here somewhere. So y'all go check so out his channel, show him some love. Uh, I'm very tickled to have those. Um, <clears throat> I guess up on this side, the next snake. He's still in a Tupperware. He hasn't grown a pile. They are such slow growing snakes. It's our Kenyan Samboa. Hey, hello. They yeah. grow super, super slow. Very he's, cool, though. He's kind of drabbing out, probably getting ready to shed again. Very good for kids, though, right? Yeah, I mean, the awesome snake Kids guys, that are I mean, wanting to, like, get into snakes. Yeah, and... if this is your first time getting into snakes or, or apprehensive about snakes, this is a good one to start a with. Really cool snake It doesn't take a whole lot of care, a whole lot of room. Um, give it a, a hot area of around the 90-degree range, you'll be fine. Low humidity though, that's why I don't know if you noticed, I don't have a water bowl in here. I take and I actually alternate the water bowl. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. We just had a, we got a lot of storms going around us right now, so we've had surges in the power. But uh, I put a water bowl in there about every two to three days, leave it in there for a day or two and then remove it. And that's why I don't have to worry about, you know, being in here. I was really kind of scared about him <coughs> being in here due to the humidity aspect in this room. Um, on this side, my hog nose, this is a Mexican hog nose or a Western hog nose. They're pretty much exactly the same. I want to see you get him out. Yeah, he's gonna... <laughs> this is a, this is a <laughs> hissy one. If you go back, though. Oh, he's not happy. If you go back, you'll see I got this guy. He was a little bitty baby. Oh, yep. so mad. Yeah, he's mad. 
He strikes his mouth closed, though. Listen at him. Oh, I'm mad. I'm mad. One of my favorite snakes, though, <laughs> you know, is I, I'd love to have an Eastern, but I can't. Easterns are protected in my area, so I can't have them. So this is the next best thing, though. I mean, I've been really tickled. I might end up getting another color morph of one of these, maybe an anaconda or... Oh, he's a rattlesnake. Yeah, he thinks he, he is. He says he is, yeah. He says he's a rattlesnake. Leave him alone. Feeding on a... There again, feeding on frozen thaws. Never had to send them. You know, if you just ask the right questions at the shows... But hognose are definitely yeah, a... Hognose are notorious. Yeah, I mean, they're one of those that we always are concerned about well, getting unless you one. trust the people that you're buying from. Because I got one from Backwater Reptiles, guys, and it, it didn't last. Well, it lasted. It would never feed. I force-fed it. After I force-fed it, it ended up passing. Well, you can't say it doesn't last because snakes last, in general, a really, really long, long time. time without any food yeah so i mean that it's it's all about whether or not they're going to eat period and i, I lost that first hog nose same I, thing with these guys and you yeah, probably want to mention there's, that there's a cricket there's some crickets in there uh, you know that i've read they enjoy insects actually large ones though one of their favorite food sources is cicadas which is pretty nuts but um I'm really kind of worried about one of these guys. He looks really, really thin. That's my, one. My buddy I got him from, he says that they eat on scented pinkies. He scented them uh, with frogs and they eat. So we're just going to have to see, guys. But I'm really, one of them is really, really healthy, really fat. The other one, he's, he looks really thin, got a, a little bit of pyramid going on there of his back. Once you can start seeing that defined backbone. And we have to be honest every direction. You yeah, know? I mean... We're just, just biding time. Yeah, you know, there's I, not a food item that we haven't offered that isn't possible. That's right. Yeah, I've tried. Uh, we will frogs. offer every food item available, name to man. I don't so. want to have to force feed one. I really, really do not. And not I mean, a venomous, especially. <laughs> you know, I didn't get into this deal, you know, to, to have to force yeah. feed. I was under the impression that they were feeding readily on frozen thawed, so I'm just hoping that it's we'll just see. a stress factor. Definitely could be stress. Uh, well, copperheads are notorious for Talking that. about that, the Nelsons, remember? Yeah, the Nelsons regurged, actually, the first feeding. So, and, but it's you never cents. know. It's 800 I mean, cents, so no problem. Um, up here, and I'm going to have to grab a ladder real quick. <laughs> well, step I am super short, so yeah. not going to happen. Take my step stool out. Here you go, guys. Let me put my step stool up here and we'll jump up and look at my ball python. I'll take the camera on up. All right, there again. This is my, my ball python. It's in one of the bigger boxes. Really got plenty of space. Huge water bowl. This is my bumblebee. There's my bumblebee. She's really, really enjoying her new digs. I picked this this enclosure up a couple months back, and she has really enjoyed it. I had to, though. You see that fan running? Which I'm just gonna set this right here for right now. Um, I got this fan running. I really would like to have some bigger vents, which he offers a couple of small fans. You know to put more air through here but i had noticed up under the water bowl that i had some mold issues going on uh starting to form so i started running a fan up here on the upper level just to help force air through which that's a big deal in this room i always have uh air going see i've got one big fan over here and i usually tilt it upwards you know just to keep the air from getting stagnant um to me, I mean, that's huge, especially with some of these spiders that I have and such. You, you know, you definitely don't want to have stagnant air. So I have a lot of, a lot of air go, airflow going on. Ever since I did that, it's gotten great. But yeah, I'll show you this real quick. <laughs> Our dumpster dog, Trixie. Yeah. If y'all if remember, Trixie was a rescue dog. We didn't know if she was fixed or not. Well, I took her, and she was supposed to be fixed the next week, but she was already pregnant. Yeah. Therefore, 
would have terminated her pregnancy, and we couldn't do that. Yeah. So, we opted to let her have one litter, and we are really excited. She's got five. We're going to keep one, right? Got to keep one. <laughs> you promised uh, Alyssa. <laughs> I mean... But uh, if anybody's interested in a puppy, they are beautiful. Yeah, they if you're close here, much... of course I'm not going to ship you a puppy. Yeah, no, absolutely you know, not. If you're in Georgia, South Carolina but area, hit me up. They all kind of look like this. Yeah. See if you start barking again. <laughs> so we've got four to get rid of. If you're interested, just let us know. And uh, also, guys, you know, I, I really, I, we've hit over 8,000 subscribers, which is crazy i really appreciate that insane uh, insane i'm probably gonna do a big giveaway at 10 uh i see this video is gone probably about 25 minutes so if you've made it this far in the video i've got something for you guys um you grab it. it's not gonna be the puppy in a bag huh? yeah put them in the bag. <laughs> april had me some bags made up and these are like a, a Repticon bag, we're calling it. So you can take it to a reptile show to put all your spoils in. Well, for us, I thought it would be cool because we're always looking for stuff to tote everything in. And yeah, and I had, I've been going back and forth. We've had bad luck. I've been wanting to get some new shirts made up. And, oh, that's a whole other story. But hopefully I got some new shirts coming too. But uh, I had a bunch of these. Not a bunch. I've got enough for three. Um, of course... A lot of you know Exoterra has come with a hydrometer and a thermometer. So I'm going to throw these in a bag. If you made it this far in the video, comment that you want the bag. I'm going to pick three of y'all. I got three bags. They're all got the same thermometer. Uh, They're exactly the hydrometer same. Hydrometer on the inside. And I'm going to ship these to you. I appreciate you watching to the end. Um, so like I said, just comment below i want the bag probably in about a week or so i'll randomly draw three names from the video and i will ship these to you guys but guys that was our pickups update more rambling uh i seem to do a lot of that a lot of rambling <laughs> but um sorry it took a week to get it out here it's been crazy busy with work plus it's been hot man it's been hot yeah, it has. But uh, I guess next video we'll do something, maybe tarantula updates. I, I try to split them up because we just got so much stuff, guys. I know it's hard, and these videos are so long, so I appreciate y'all hanging in there and watching them. Hope you enjoyed it. Uh, like I said next video we'll do a tarantula update. If you live close to Georgia, Carolina area close, you want a puppy, hit me up. Be glad Definitely to get do them that. to you. <laughs> Be glad to get them to you. Only four. That's right. Guys, I hope you have an awesome week. As always, stay safe out there. Guess we'll catch you next time. Appreciate it, guys.